All right, let's not lose any more time. Let's get started. And anyway, it's going to be recorded and on demand available as well. So, uh, you know, that's they can pick it up later if somebody joins late. So, um, uh, Mohammed asked, this is about GCP backup. Uh, this is about GCP backup, Google Cloud. It's not on Gmail, G Drive. This was more uh, part of the Office offerings on Monday. So this is actually on Google Cloud. And please feel free to you know, ask questions. So today we are actually talking about Hike for Google, Hike for GCP, Google Cloud Platform, as it was called before. Before we start, it's being recorded, as I said. Um, feel free to ask anything uh, like you already did start. Uh, unmute, uh, chat, whatever you like. And uh, at the end, we'll pull out a Haiku swag uh, box as well for one lucky winner. So stay tuned for that one. So first of all, who we are, uh, if you don't let know uh, what is Haiku. So we're actually been building backups for more than 25 years, myself included. You know, I was actually, you know, coding, programming in the early days, then managing projects. And now we're all, the whole company moved into building our own data protection product for the first time about four years ago. We started with Nutanix because we want to utilize the experience and know-how we have into building something really new, modern, and simple data protection for, uh, started with Nutanix and then expanded to the multi-cloud world with Google and Azure uh, and everything else, right? Um, so that's who we are in essence, really huge data protection expertise. And what we have to offer is Haiku Protege, which is our multi-cloud platform solution, which supports each of these clouds in a very special purpose built way. So a special solution for Google, a special solution for on-prem, for Nutanix, VMware, a very native solution for Azure as well, Office and so on, right? So this is uh, what we do. We then connect all of these with Haiku Protege into really a data protection platform with migration and disaster recovery capabilities. This is this is who we are, right? And bringing simplicity into all of this with application awareness, with proper ransomware protection, uh, making it really robust enterprise solution um, for you. So what is Haiku for Google, right? What is Haiku for GCP? So you have your Google Cloud. It has various, plat various parts of it, right? You have Google Compute Engine, GCE, Google Cloud Storage, Google Buckets, uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, containers. And what Haiku is, is a service running in Google, protecting holistically complete Google environments. It's not like you have to have different solution for Kubernetes, different for Cloud Storage, different for Engine, right? No, it's one simple solution, backing this up, right? That's the data protection part, backing it up to Google Cloud Storage, but also with the protege part of it, connecting, with the on-prem infrastructure and allowing backups and migration disaster recovery from on-prem and back, right? So this is in a nutshell, but let's take a step back now and see, do we even need a backup in GCP? Because a lot of times we are actually fighting this, this little thing uh, out there, which is, you know, I'll simply use native snapshots and scripts. This is what customers uh, say often, right? They find it simple to develop something on their own. Well, the problem with this is, very vast, I'd say, right? First of all, it's not cost-effective because keeping native snapshots is simply not cost-effective because it's always kept on the standard, most uh, costly tier. Whereas with the proper backup solution, you should be able to tier this off to a lower cost tiers of data, right? Snapshots are just snapshots. They are not a second copy somewhere else, right? On a backup storage. Uh, on the block, on the buckets, and can be deleted very easily. It can be encrypted, right? So it's not really a backup. And having some kind of scripting always introduce single point of failure in the companies. You have a guy who's great at scripting. He's liking this. He's scripting something. Then you develop something else. He needs to script that. He goes, what then, right? Um, you want also simple file level recovery, application consistency, uh, all of these features, which is hard to get if you go natively script stuff and you know at the end of the day you got single pane of what right not much so really what you need is 
to leave it to the experts and actually take proper backups in GCP. So if we say, yes, okay, I understand I need a backup in GCP. So I want to walk you through what are what is the level of thinking of what, what do I need to do once I need backup in GCP and what do customers do? So first of all, you need to read the manuals and specs, right? Then you need to perform some sort of a sizing exercise, right? You need to see how big of a VM you need to create, what kind of backup storage. You need to create a virtual machine infrastructure, where to run this in the cloud, or if you're running it in on-prem, put some agents and stuff. You need to install this software there, right? You need to make sure that you upgrade this software, that you protect this software as well. So, you know, you need to protect the backup software as well, obviously. So all of this, right, at the end, you need to pay for the infrastructure because this is something that is running in Google, right? And you need to ask for a quote, get it addressed with financial, all of these things. All of this is actually on-prem mechanics. This is mechanics of the thinking of the on-prem world brought into the cloud. And the very reason why customers move to cloud is to simplify their lives, not to have this, right? So what Haiku brings, Haiku for GCP brings is we remove this on-prem mechanics by allowing you a subscription from GCP marketplace and really true data protection as a service with even integrated GCP billing model, right? That's what I call something I call Haiku magic because it really truly feels like Haiku magic. And that is what the proper data protection as a service means. It means there is no on-prem mechanics. So how does it look? Let me show you, you know, enough of slides for now. Let's switch to it. So what this means is you simply subscribe to Haiku for Google, right? From the marketplace, you subscribe. And we are the ones deploying this for you, maintaining it, upgrading it. Uh, delivering a proper service. This is running in our project, so you're, it's not costing you any infrastructure which you're running Google, right? That's why it's magic. You just go in, you subscribe, and after 15 minutes, you log in to your Haiku for Google, right? It's that simple. And the billing is also integrated, right? With the proper service, you want billing integrated as well as part of this service. And what you see here is in my Google Cloud billing platform, uh, Right? You will see that Haiku is just a, one of the services, same as you pay for Google Cloud Storage for the backups, which are kept on Cloud Storage or kept in Google. You pay this to Google. It's one of your uh, services on the bill, right? And Haiku Inc. and our service is there as well, uh, cost of that service is there, right? So this is the interesting part of really having a proper data protection as a service on, on Google, okay? So, now that you have deployed this in a proper way, not with, with your wrench tool, you need to, again, thinking from old perspective, right? You again need to take your wrench tool and say, what do I need to do? I need to create a login. All right, hmm, how are my passwords protected? How are they stored? Which passwords do I use? Then you need to see, okay, I need to configure additional administrators, right? I'm not alone in the company. I need to add projects for each of them that they will back up, right? Um, so what happens is all of a sudden you're configuring and maintaining who has permissions on which projects. Uh, again, this is something you do in Google and then you have to do it again for the backup infrastructure, if you can at all by the product, right? Then there is something called workers or uh, proxies, right? Now the pain with these things is if brought, if from coming from this thinking of the on-prem world, this is something you need to manage, right? They might be automatically deployed, but you need to size them. You need to configure them. You need to make sure they're in a proper zone, in a proper region, right? All of these things. You need to resize them. You need to reconfigure them after something changes. There is a lot of pain connected with these workers, which are, again, something that is brought from the on-prem world and left to you to manage, even though, and it's not the proper service, right? And God forbid, you know, deploying and maintaining agents and having an on-prem solution and putting code inside the virtual machines. So this is what, again, your train of thoughts or your process, once you start adopting a backup solution is in a classic solution, right? So what Haiku brings is again, something very different, which is another part of Haiku magic. And this is the being cloud native. So what does this mean? It means that we do not require you to manage any passwords and uh, protection and uh, 
users and so on, right? We connect and utilize the platform for it because we connect with IIM and we inherit everything from Google for the multi tenancy. How does this look like? So let me show you. So if we go back, right, to here, this is my Haiku manager. This is the Haiku Protege console where I can see all of my Haikus, Google, Cloud, Azure, everything protected. Office as well, which we discussed on Monday. And uh, let me now switch and go to my Haiku for Google, right? As you can see now, I'm logging in with my Google credentials. So I'm logged in with IAM credentials. There is nothing I need to do. We are not keeping any passwords, right? It's all token-based authentication. And as soon as you log in, you are actually seeing the projects and the subscriptions you already have permission to inside Google. So there is this is fully inherited from Google. There is nothing else you need to maintain additionally, right? We just inherit this from the platform. And what you have is the ability to group things, like projects, right? If you're a service provider, you can group different projects uh, for different uh, reasons into protection sets, as we call them, and then manage them as one, right? Have a single set of policies, single dashboard, everything. Um, so this gives you really native experience to Google because everything is inherited, right? There is no additional management you need. And on top of that, what is another part of this nativeness is, remember the scaling, right? The, the workers, the data movers. So how does this work in Haiku? So what we call this dynamic scaling up or down is really important because in Haiku, what you can do is you simply go, uh, when you do a backup, right? What Haiku will do for every job, for every backup or a restore, we are the ones creating a temporary worker instance, which is very configurable on its own, automatically configured to, you know, to fit the needs of the backup the, the best. And then at the end, it's removed. This means that if you run from 10 VMs to 100 and back to 50, the other day, it doesn't matter. There is nothing reconfiguration that you need to do on these workers and data movers. This is all automatically provisioned by Haiku and taken care of, right? And that's the big plus uh, of, again, from simplicity perspective. And at the end, we are completely agentless for everything. File level recovery to, to applications, everything is completely agentless by design in Haiku, right? So this is what native means. And then you talk about another, which is something we call a secret source of Haiku, right? But let me show you what this is. So let's talk questions, right? One thing which I really noticed is, am I getting a proper backup? Not to just snapshot management. What I've noticed is a lot of solutions nowadays on cloud say they are a backup solution, but at the end of the day, what they are doing is just allowing you to keep their managing snapshots keeping multiple snapshots in different regions, which is what you can do with the script as well. This might be simpler, right? But it's ex actually just snapshot management. Still can be ransomware attacked, can be, it's still costly, right? Because it keeps data on the primary tier. So what we have in Haiku is really special way how we do backups with the unique forever incremental strategy. And the power of this strategy is we do not it's forever incremental, just tracking the change blocks and the unique blocks are transferred to the data, to the storage, only unique blocks. So it's deduplicated. And the power of it is there is no compute needed at the backend, which is doing synthetization, right? When a full expires, you need to synthesize it to the next incremental. This is not something you need with Haiku at all. So it's really cost-effective way to, to perform backups. Then another question is, can I have multiple copies of my data and can, can I keep them on different tiers to save costs? And definitely yes, right? This is what we are all about. Intuitive policy-driven backup. So let me show you how our policies look like in Haiku. It's really straightforward. What you have is, let's say, I'll walk you through a best case or best practice scenario. Right? You can say I'm doing my backups on daily basis. So it's RPO SLA driven. And as a primary protection, I might want to keep snapshots just for a couple of days so that you know I can put it as a backup directly, but let's keep it maybe for a snapshot, multi-regional one, it's the same price, for a couple of days to get really fast recovery from. For, and you know, restores happen from within the first couple of days. So you have this level. Then you have a backup, a proper backup, which is kept maybe for a couple of weeks on the storage, right? And then on top of that, you have archiving capabilities, right? 
usually for legislation long term. Let me show you where it is. So if you go here to archiving, and uh, what you can do is you can really set up daily, weekly, monthly, yearly archives, right? Let's say monthlies can go kept for six months and you can really choose where to keep them in which tier. You can let Haiku choose automatically based on the retention, or you can say, look, these are, this can go to cold line tier. These backups can go into um, archive tier, right? These are yearlies, I will never touch them. So all of this together really helps you get multiple copies of your data in the appropriate tiers and really reduces the uh, cost at the end of the day, right? And it's really simple. And then a quick question, am I protected against transfer? How do I, you know, is if snapshots can be touched, how do I protect against transfer? So what we do is we have something we call air-gapped backups. So what does this mean? So where are the backups going? If we look at the targets, when you configure targets, Haiku can do it automatically for you. Or you can say, look, I will create a target inside Google. I'll create a storage. And then I will expose it to Haiku. You know, this and this storage backups, right? This bucket is there. I will use it as a backup storage. And then the way I will attack, the way Haiku is going to access this is by through a service account. What this means is that this service account, this JSON, is given only to Haiku, nobody else. It's a private, it cannot be a public bucket, it can't be a public, public target. Therefore, only Haiku has the ability to write to it, nobody else, right? And obviously nobody can get to this JSON because it's in Google and you can't get to it anymore. You need to recreate it anyway. So it's really air-gapped in a sense that nobody can access this data, right? And it, this data can even be in a different subscription, in a different uh, region, wherever you like. So that's that's the power of this solution, right? That it's really completely untouchable. Um, and then what about granular recovery, right? That's a classic question which you need. Can I do file level recovery, application recovery? Definitely, right? So with Haiku, when we do backups um, of the virtual machines, we have something called um, cataloging or um, let's say restore of individual files, which means that once you enable this, catalog is available and Haiku can perform simple file level recovery from a disk, from, just restore a simple single VM, single, single file, single folder directly back into the virtual machine or into a different instance altogether. And again, without any agents at all, right? And we'll talk more on applications as well. So let's talk on applications, right? So what is it that we do for apps that is so special? So first of all, we will auto-discover all the apps, right? Similar to how we auto-discover instances, how we auto-discover buckets as well, we auto-discover applications. Now, this auto-discovery, once it's done, it will show you under applications, it shows you what kind of apps you are running. And now you can assign a policy to the application and make sure it's properly protected. Right? So there is no thinking, what am I running in which virtual machine in each instance? Now, what is it that we support right, for this? So we are the first one to support SAP HANA properly on Google with a, something called Google Cloud Storage Backend. Right? So this means it's really a properly certified solution. Uh, this backend is certified that we are using by SAP HANA. And the way it works, Haiku will discover the SAP HANA instance in the virtual machine, uh, the database. It will show you what kind of version you are running, and then it will make sure that it deploys the backend agent. Uh, it updates the backend agent in this in this virtual machine, right? This is obviously something important for the SAP HANA admins, right? Uh, because they really want to make sure that the SAP HANA backups are visible in the SAP HANA cockpit and studio, which in this case is right because you are doing we are doing in this case a backup through backend agent and from the restore capabilities, this means they can utilize their own SAP HANA cockpit, or they can even come to Haiku and just select the database and perform point in time restore uh, or restore into a different, right? Into a different region or into a different instance altogether. So it's really granular point in time recovery of, and really a true certified proper backup of SAP HANA, right? Apart from that, we just launched a couple of months back really native GKE support. 
So Google Kubernetes engine, right? It's the new thing, it's coming. And we really wanted to make a solution which is natively built into the platform that you don't need another solution just for the GKE, right? Just for Kubernetes, you need another thing. No, with Haiku, you have a single set of policies, single, you protect your instances, buckets, applications. So what happens is we automatically discover the apps which are running on GKE. And you can now select which one you want to restore. And you can restore a complete application, right? The whole cluster, uh, or not the whole cluster, but the app. And you can restore it into any cluster, into any namespace you like, um, very simply, right? So you can change this. You can do also, which is most important, right? When we do a backup, we are actually backing up all the files, JSON, you know, YAMLs, JSONs, everything. We are backing up the persistent disks, which means you can also restore just the storage. Very simply, you can restore the PVC or just a simple single uh, persistent disk, right? Or you can also restore just a single resource object, which is actually just a, just a YAML file. So all of these options are fully supported with this very native, natively integrated GK support uh, in Haiku, right? And on top of that, Again, from holistic perspective, pr protection of Google, we support also Google Cloud uh, storage, right? Which means you can protect buckets. Now, this comes handy in different scenarios, right? Because you might want to back up Google Cloud storage because your application is keeping data there, right? Or where it also comes in handy, you can have services which are running on Google, like Cloud SQL or BigQuery, right? And the way these are usually backed up is you anyway have built-in tools which will dump the database, right? But it doesn't keep, this doesn't allow you to keep data for a long time, just for a week or so. So what you can do with Haiku is you can have pre and post scripts, right? And configure these that they dump the SQL to the SQL, to the bucket, right? And then Haiku uh, will back up the bucket and the database like that. So you really have a holistic data protection across across the complete Google portfolio and everything. And at the end of the day, when it comes to apps, there is always something you need to do from automation perspective, right? And in general, this is something you want to do. So with Haiku, what's interesting to note is that first of all, if application is not discovered automatically, then it doesn't mean that you can't protect it adequately and consistently because for every app, we do have pre and post scripts, which you can run, right? Also, what this means is from policies perspective, that we from automation, right, you can integrate with Google labels. And then based on the label, right, department, uh, finance or something, right, if this label is found on the virtual machine on the instance uh, in Google, or on the bucket will automatically assign the appropriate policy to it. So you can really have processes defined in the company saying, whenever you create something, create a bucket, that's it. Uh, Haiku, create a label, Haiku is gonna pick it up and automatically protect it appropriate with the appropriate policy. Uh, and if this is not enough, everything is exposed through the REST API Explorer, right? So we can have, you know, GUI is really nice and beautiful, but it's uh, actually, Everything is the brains of the product are in the backend, and this backend is fully exposed. Okay, and then at the end of the day, there is another thing which is a wheel of this uh, motion in GCP, and that's mobility, right? What does this mean? It means that from the restore perspective, we want to allow you to do dev and test or cross regional disaster recovery in a very simple manner. So, how does this work? Well, very simple again, right? You go into your instance or your bucket or your GKE, and you can say, look, I just want to restore this particular instance. You can do it in place, right? But you can also clone it. And when you clone it, you can really select a different region, a different project, a different zone, a different network, right? You can add a tag for it so that it automatically gets uh, protected as well. So all of these things are very simple and simple, simple UI here, allowing you really cross region disaster recovery in a, in a flash or dev and test purposes, right? Where you can, even the SAP HANA instance can be for DevOps purposes, cloned into a different region or into a different project, 
right? So all of this really allows operational efficiency in a simple manner. And other than that, also we have our on-prem solution and the protege uh, story, right? Which means you can have cost-efficient on-prem backups, which go to Google into different tiers, and again, air gap, uh, and allow you to do the migration and disaster recovery to Google Cloud, right? And how this is done, this is done with the spin up to cloud button. If I go to my primary haiku uh, in my on-prem haiku now, uh, this is, okay, let's go here. If I go to on-prem haiku, you'll see just how simple it is, right? Uh, because what you do is you are now in the on-prem world, right? With on-prem solution where you're backing up your virtual machines uh, consistently, right? You're backing up your applications, maybe your SQL application, and you're backing it up to Google Target, right? So that you have the ability, first of all, to get cost-effective archives backups, but also that in case of disaster, you have the ability to power on the machine in Google or just to migrate it. And the way this is done from Haiku is very simple using this spin up to cloud button, right? So just by clicking spin up to cloud, selecting the service which you are running in Haiku, selecting the project, selecting the regions, you are able, or what Haiku will do is copy the data, uh, or if it's already there, it's gonna utilize that data, power on the machine in Google, right? And uh, from disaster recovery perspective, this is the really cost effective because you don't actually have to run anything in Google to have this done. Or, you know, in usually in a disaster recovery, you always have to have something running uh, in order to allow disaster recovery to happen. With Haiku, with this approach, there is nothing you need to run. You need to have a subscription of the service uh, and that's it, right? But only in case something happens, then you need to uh, perform a restore in that case, right? And perform disaster recovery. And when you see here, when I'm doing a spin up, I have from the very start, the ability to select different machine types, different networks, everything, right? So if I say here for, right, you'll see that everything from the get go, you can control how this machine is going to look like in the cloud. And once it's there, once you click spin up, it's gonna get there, it's gonna be restored into the cloud, disaster recovered. You can continue protecting it in the cloud. And then once this is done, you also have a very unique ability to get it back from the cloud with spin up VM from Google Cloud. Right. And that's the power of this protege functionality, which allows you complete mobility around the cloud. So why Haiku at the end? Well, it gives you time back because it's really simple and it's proper data protection as a solution. There is no wrench keys and on-prem mechanics there, right? It really allows you to utilize the power of the platform because you're using Google. Google is an amazing platform and you, you can use it natively, right, with Haiku. It's secure, reliable, ransomware protection. We even have something we proactive support, right? Because we're offering this as a service, our support is gonna reach out and say, hey, something is not configured good, so your backups are very often failing. Can you look at this? Something is weird, right? Check your environment or we can help you. Application focus designed to protect your holistically your environment. And as, as said at the end, really cross cloud mobility with migration disaster capabilities and just efficient backup and recovery all around, right? So this is what Haiku for Google is. It's, uh, I love the platform, right? It's, uh, I love the, our tool on it because it's really an amazing and it really is magical once you start using it, once you get away from that on-prem uh, way of thinking and really adopt cloud, which is the reason why you in the first place go to cloud, then having such a backup is, is a big, is a big uh, step forward. Um, all right. Oh, maybe one, before we mentioned on the winners, just to mention that everything I've shown you today, more or less, is available as a specific solution also on Haiku for Azure, right? The Haiku for Azure is just lagging by a couple of months behind all the functionality which is available in Google, but pretty much everything is Google is already there. If it's not, it's coming, right? So that's, uh, that's the power of uh, having Haiku for Azure and then AWS is coming as well. So time to pick our winner. Uh, and while we are picking that, just to, while Katarina is gonna pick a winner, just to mention that we have a session on Haiku with Nutanix Mine, 
v3 and what's uh, new with mine v3 and Nutanix subjects and uh, join us then any questions Hi, Marco. This is Jens. Uh, hey, hey. Nice, nice talk to you. Man, can you hey, just... Yes. Hi, how are you? Can you just um, uh, elaborate uh, once again on the ransomware protection? I believe this is something which uh, lots of customers uh, like to know how, how that works, yeah? so how mm -hmm. they are protected against ransomware. Definitely, definitely. So okay. the thing is with ransomware protection, if ransomware can't touch your data, then you are... You know, if they can't get to it, then, you know, there is no better protection. So the way this was designed in Haiku, right? Uh, Haiku communicates. We have our control plane, which is sitting in our Google, in our platform, right? Or in our part of Google and uh, projects which are running in, in customer, uh, customer projects, right? And that's where the storage is. Now, we communicate between each other only with internal IPs. There is no need to have anything externally accessible from the internet, right? Also, the storage itself uh, is not something we allow to be publicly accessible. Plus, the only uh, allowed access to this storage, which you can configure in Haiku, is to say, when you create a target, well, let me actually open Haiku for Google. When you create a target in Google, Haiku for Google, what you select is, you specify a specific service account in Google and only this service account, so only this JSON, which is one time created, never again. It's, you can't read it ever again, right? This is given to Haiku. So this means that nobody except from Haiku is able to write to this storage and uh, change anything there. So therefore, it's a really properly air-gapped uh, solution uh, from, from internet, from public access, from ransom, right? Nobody can actually get it. That's the, that's the main point. Okay, thank you. Yep, thanks yes for the question. Uh, are the recordings of these sessions available? Yes, we will. they will be on demand available later uh, at any point. I think uh, probably from Friday or next Monday, they're gonna be on the same link where you registered, there's gonna be on demand access. Uh, yes, actually you're the winner. So, <laughs> so congrats. Uh, all right, what about protecting more than VM in GCP, like database or services? Andre, that's a question from Andre. So, like database, right? So, as mentioned, right? Databases, uh, applications, which you are running in Google, that's fully supported, right? So, there is a couple of ways you can, you can support these. One is, very simple, you can have application-consistent backups of any database by post pre and post access scripts, right? So that's, you know, a given. Then apart from that, you have the very simplicity with SAP HANA, which can be automatically discovered and protected uh, by Haiku using backend agent integration. And also on top of that, any application which is running on GKE is going to be automatically protected as well. Because it's not only that it's going to be protected, it's going to be automatically discovered, right? So you see the application, and you can protect it. And then on top of that, if you're running apps as a service, database as a service, for instance, SQL, right? As mentioned, these services uh, have native backup or native dump capabilities, right? So they can dump the database to a bucket, but they can't keep it for a long time. So with Haiku, we can back up the buckets themselves. So if you dump the database to the bucket, we can pick up these backups and keep it for long-term retention. Uh, and we envision even more integration with uh, other services or major services like Cloud SQL, BigQuery, as well coming in Haiku for GCP. Hope this answers the question. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Well, Hope it was a valuable session for everybody and uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Marco. Bye-bye.